Alright, so thank you so much for joining me. I'm doing a reading here for Capricorn 2013. So I got a request and I'm very um, thankful. So I'm very happy to do this. So I want to do a card reading and um, for Capricorn I did some research for you as far as your first house having Pluto and Mars and, and uh, Mercury, excuse me, in it for um, last year, coming into the new year, that energy, um, the significance of the moon, and um, all the planets, Venus, Saturn, and you can um, definitely um, make a suggestion at the end of this video, uh, for this video on YouTube, that really does a great job at telling you about your moon cycles, um, and the different planets, and so on, for the new year, 2003. But what I want to do is a reading for past, present, future for Capricorn 2013. On um, your past, present, future. And two things you can do to ground yourself and three things you can do for your highest good. So hopefully I'm coming in really loud because i got to get a mic. <laughs> so let's tap into a reading for Capricorn and by request, SS, this is for you. So I'm going to be doing the eight card spread. And past, present, future. Two things you can do to ground yourself. And three things you can do for your highest good. So what I will do is start out with your, your uh, past. And your past is all about releasing, transition. So... The past is all about transitioning, so I'm seeing that you have made some significant changes or tried to. You, you did a move, uh, things with family, you just had to transition yourself, okay? And you've been through that transition and you're, you're pretty much uh, going through it as well. And for the present, it's all about trying to find some kind of fun within your current position right now, which is not easy to do. So you're going to have to call on just enjoying the moment, even though you're still on your journey and you're trying to still figure out yourself and figure out what you want to do. You can still enjoy that journey. Make sure you have time for fun. So you're very focused on your work, Capricorn, and you're very, um, you care what your community, your coworkers, your family thinks about you and your career choices. So don't worry so much about that. Just try to have fun is what Dolphin is saying in the moment while you're developing and growing for your, um, your professional and your personal life. For your future, just know that you will have a safe journey into where you're going. So Zebra is all about safe arrival, okay? They're known for their journey, all right? So no matter how high you have to climb that mountain, how many challenges and levels you have to go through with different exams, different tests, um, different approval from people above you so that you can get into the work position that you need. You will get there uh, this year. I'm seeing that um, March will be a little bit rough, but I see April, you will have a really good transition into a, a new career. I see windows. I see the sun coming in. So in this company, I really see that there's more windows in where you're going to be working and you have an idea of where that is that you want to go. So that's what your future is. You're going to have a safe arrival there, but know that March is going to be pretty interesting, but but um, set yourself up, um, set your meditations up, you know, today's December 31st, so January 1st is coming in. So just know that February and March, you're going to get yourself situated. January you're, you're still going to have your issues. February is going to look really good. And then March, you're going to be like, whoa, what's going on in April? You know, then things will just pick up a little bit more for you. So the, the two things that you can do to ground yourself is cleansing, okay? So always just clear your mind, meditation. This is all about cleansing. What do you do for cleansing? Is it exercise? Is it some form of dance, yoga, meditation? Whatever it is, bring that into your life to help uh, guide you into just that release. Always have a release, an outlet. Very important to ground yourself. The second thing you can do to ground yourself, which is real, wow, really beautiful. I, I always 
end up getting a fish eagle for, for grounding. So this is great spirit. So whatever the divine is to you, that's your connection, okay? The sun, the moon, the, the great spirit created it all. So great spirit is saying that find your own connection to me. Uh, what do I mean to you? You know, your understanding of me. Have that one-on-one -on -one channel with the divine. So this is all about you connecting to the divine to ground yourself. So that constant cleansing and that grounding um, communication, uh, friendship with the divine, okay? And the first um, three things for, you can do for your highest good. So the first thing you can do for your highest good is detach. And I like gazelle because gazelle, they're, they're fast runners, okay? So what it is, is is creating distance between you and people that always seem to put you down. And in family, you don't want to... You, you, I don't know if I want to say you want to get rid of family, but just have less communication with those relatives that are always putting you down for your aspiration. Because while they're putting you down, you're going to be doing what you need to do to accomplish your goal. So, so this gazelle is saying putting distance between mental and physical distance between anyone that tries to put you down for what you're doing. Because what you're going to do on your path is that you are going to uh, give yourself that gentle transition into what you want to do as far as career. Okay, so distance yourself from past, also love, past relationships I see, but friends, co-workers, I see co-workers, I see family. So distance yourself from people that are naysayers, negative. You don't need that in your life. You need to stay focused and grounded on what you need to get done. Okay, for your highest good, first thing. Second thing you can do for your highest good is have compassion for yourself and for the people that you love, your family, your immediate family. So... Bring that compassion for yourself to elevate your self-esteem in yourself. So this is all about compassion, what you can do for your highest good. Have compassion for yourself, okay? Because you have to stand on your own two feet, so you really have to um, have that compassion for yourself. Elephant. Oh, we have my elephant right here. <laughs> and the other thing you can do for your highest good is having that, that balance of yin and yang, that male and female energy. So... If you're in a relationship, give each other time to have space in, in the home to do what, they, what you need to do. So this is what you can do for your highest good, for your relationship, if you're in a relationship. If you're not in a relationship, create that space in your, in your home for that relationship, your closet, your, closet, your bed, whatever you, you, you feel you need to create space. You know, lighten your load in your home, what you don't need anymore. Do you really need that? Can you part with it? You know, make cleansing. It, we're in a waning moon right now, so this is perfect if you don't have love in your life. Cleanse, get rid of things that you don't need. And it's also for you, because you'll see that space around you and you'll breathe easier having that, that space that you need. And, um, and, and, and again, if you're in a relationship, create time for each other for the new year. Say, hey, we, you know, we, we both can do things together, but what is it that you like to do by yourself? Give each other that space, that room. Maybe it's also a, a vow of silence for for maybe three hours in the morning where you all go about doing your own thing, have breakfast together, but there's a vow of silence so you kind of feel alone even though you're there's a lot of people in the home. You just kind of have that silent moment where the house is quiet and everyone's doing their own thing. All right, so that's the third thing you can do for your highest good. And again, um, I'm reading from um, Ancient Animal Wisdom card deck. I really love these cards. They're so clear and they have also numerology in there, different spreads you can do. What I find really cool is a chakra spread also, but um, I, I, uh, I'll do that for you if you'd like. So the placement of all the cards, I, I think I did a video on that as well. So if there's any other zodiacs out there that would like a reading, um, just let me know. I'm happy to do that. I can do it in January. It's perfectly fine. So what I want to do is a, a, a love spell, a love spell, <laughs> a love reading. <laughs> okay, that's not going to work. And um, reading for you. Dun, 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 dun. And it's five. It's five. Five is the number that I want to use. So I don't know if I have that here. One, two, three, four, five. So what I'm getting from these cards, and I'm just going to do a quick reading of them. I'm going to show you the cards, but what I'm going to do is just a general um, overall of what I'm getting from all these cards, okay? 
So what I'm getting from all these cards for relationship is that you need to feel grounded. Um, you need to feel grounded um, in where you're living right now, okay? You need to feel connected to where you're living. You need to go out, be more social. Um, you need to um, cleanse yourself from the past. You need to also see the beauty within yourself. And you also need to work on not hiding so much off yourself, but also being willing to work with your partner, your future partner, if you're single. Um, work with your future partner. And um, having that grounding, and, you, and also you got fish, um, fish ego again, that great spirit. So really ground yourself. I see... I see that you need to have that spiritual connection, and if you do already, then trust in it. Because sometimes you'll have that spiritual connection, and great and great spirit, or or the divine, whichever card you're using, will come up. And the reason why they'll come up again is because you're doubting it. So even if you have that uh, connection, and you are very grounded and spiritual, and you feel connected, it will come up again because you are doubting that so don't doubt that and I see that you need to go places where where you think that ideal partner will be in your community um, don't go places where people are just you know going through a hard time so they're just gonna go somewhere you know that's associated with releasing that go somewhere where, where you you would be when you're happy you know when you feel grounded and connected for bringing that relationship into your life and always a constant cleansing okay and then finding that beauty within. Just when, when you're looking for that ideal partner, you're not going to look for that partner to be what you think beauty is. You're going to go on a deeper level. Of course, a person can look physically attractive, but you want to make sure that you can connect to this person um, in conversation and so on. So you want, you want that. Okay, and then chameleon. You know, chameleon is great at, at disguising itself for protection. Okay, so what this is saying is on uh, on the flip side is actually relating to your partner, okay? Kind of being in their skin. Um, so make sure that you can communicate good with your partner, all right? And you are connected, so don't doubt that, all right? So that's for the personal relationship. I hope that this helps you. And just know that your career, I... I for you, um, for your personal reading, I really see that you're going to transition into a new job and April is going to be um, the, that promotion or that new job that you really feel that will serve your life's purpose. I hope this helps. Yay. <laughs> so thank you so much for the request. All right. Have a beautiful, happy new year. Thank you.